Hi, um, my name is Beth Schechter. Uh, these days I, um, I work as a curriculum developer um, for a company called Skill Crush, and we make you know, HTML lessons and CSS lessons and JavaScript lessons, all kind of stuff. Um, but once upon a time, I used to do something a little bit different. I worked for a company called Stamen Design, um, which some of you may have heard of, doing business development and um, writing proposals and that kind of thing. And one year I decided to go to my very first state of the map. It was 2013 and I really didn't know anybody in the mapping community, but I found myself in a talk with, uh, which is the same talk where I met Alan McConkie, who's here somewhere. And uh, it was, Alyssa Wright was speaking about just like the dismal numbers of women in, uh, in the mapping community. And I was like, this is really stupid. I don't like this. I'm gonna change this. So. Um, I sent out, I thought, what was a really casual email to some friends, to being like, hey, let's get together and work through some map tutorials, meet me at Stamen, it'll be super fun. Um, and then very quickly it became like this like bona fide meetup and there was a waiting list and all kinds of stuff. And on the one hand, this was really, really, really exciting. And I was like, ooh, this is really cool. But on the other hand, it was kind of like, you know, like reading a pregnancy test and being like, oh, oh, I didn't know that those kinds of activities would lead to this, you know, I had no idea that suddenly now I am pregnant with child, this is very interesting. Um, and, you know, my children quickly just like propagated all over the countryside, sort of like a pox, but also like a very delightful pox, and a pox that I was, that I and many other people were like really, really, really excited about. Um, you know, and people say like, oh, you're never really ready to be a parent. So I was like, oh, I guess that's true for organizations too. Um, but at the same time, I just like, I was like, oh my God, I have this like baby and I'm totally not prepared to have this baby. Um, this very large now international baby. Um, but luckily I wasn't alone, I had a lot of help. So I, uh, I, had, I have these really wonderful co-founders, Alan, Lizzie, and Camille, who were all like, oh yeah, we're gonna help you all the way. Alan was really great with teaching, along with Lizzie, Camille helped to organize. All of them are way better at Twitter than I am, so that was really great. Um, we also had our founding partner, Stamen, who was uh, you know, wonderful about giving me time during my work day to actually work on map time, which in hindsight was really, I don't think I realized what a gift that was until later, um, but that was really awesome. And then also like snacks for meetups and paying for stickers, which are more expensive than you'd think. Um, and then there was also the map time community, like all of you who are in the map time community really helped out and helped us to answer what we thought were big questions when you know the organization started. In 2014, the first year after I'd been to State of the Map and seen Alyssa Wright uh, give that talk, we decided to do a birds of a feather at State of the Map in DC and had, had, we're asking all these questions like, what is map time? What is okay at a map time? What is not okay at a map time? And work together with the community to answer these questions. And at the time we thought that they were big questions, but then we got to like the really big questions, which were like, okay, what are we really doing here? Is this a free and open source project or is this like a for-profit company? Um, do we do a 501c3 or an LLC or a benefit core? Um, who owns map time? This thing that I sort of gave birth to and then became its own sort of entity. Entity. Should we do membership? My God, what a pain in the ass that sounds like. Um, and also, you know, but what about sponsorship? Is, there, is it possible to have sponsorship from companies like CarterDB or Mapbox or Boundless or anybody without having sort of an inherent bias towards that company? And what does that mean as an educational institution? Um, or not even institutions like a really strong word, but what does that mean as an educational group that really wants to teach all things open source map making? Um, so at this point, I'm just like, I, I just felt like a very overwhelmed mother. You know, my child is crying. I don't even know what to do. Um, so I tried to just tell myself, it's all just one big learning experience, right? Like map time is about learning, life is about learning. I'm just gonna keep learning. Like this is just learning. Um, and it's true, I did. I've learned some really wonderful lessons um, through map time. Um, one of the first example lessons is don't make an admin, don't make everyone an admin of your GitHub account, um, which we learned was bad when the GitHub account got deleted by accident when somebody was like, oh, I wanna delete repo? I don't know what that is, okay, sure. Um, so don't do that. Um, luckily, I don't know who it was at GitHub who saved us. Someone at GitHub saved us and brought it back, which was great. Um, example two, um, if you ask for money, which I did at another map time talk, um, a far more cheerful map time talk, which is normally how these things go, um, know how much you need before asking. Someone was like, how much do you need? And I was like, oh, 
I don't know, talk to me later. Um, it would have also been helpful if I had had a bank account. So like, you know, like clearly, you know, the proverbial shit was not together. Um, and then, you know, there's another big lesson that I learned, which is that, you know, if you have to start a business in California and then move to Oregon, but don't have your organization bank account set up yet, and then you have to do a lot of really crappy paperwork and may not even end up with a bank account at all, which is a major blocker for applying for 501c3 status, which is a major blocker for applying for things like grants or getting discounts on things like Slack and Meetup, which are things that we use all the time. So, and also things that all map time chapters ask for always like, oh my God, it's really expensive. And I'm like, I know, I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. I know that I've been pretending like I have for a long time, but I don't. Um, so, but you know, this has led me to this very simple equation, um, which is, you know, if you're still figuring out logistics and you move to a new state and you start a new and more demanding than it was really supposed to be job, then you buy a house and you live with your partner for the first time and have a really dark and rainy winter, which Portland is known for, and maybe have some other not awesome personal stuff go on, like find out that your mom stopped breathing for a couple minutes, um, and then you try to run an open source community, you will end up with complete and total burnout. This is what the recipe looks like. Um, um, and so in addition to burnout, I started having these feelings of just like total and complete failure. This is an image from uh, El Luna's The Crossroads of Should and Must, which if you, hadn't, if you haven't read it, you must, you should read it. Um, and I just was like, I am a total failure, like for real. I just thought, I, like this was basically me. This is a portrait of me in winter of uh, 2016, earlier this year. Um, I was really just like down in the dumps and was like, I don't know how to do all of this. So, um, I, but I did what any good, completely stressed out um, person would do, and I went to the internet, which had some really bad advice actually, but then also some good advice. And if you end up Googling something like open source community and burnout, actually what you'll find on the first page is a talk by Kathleen Danielson, who is somebody in the GEO community from Phosphor G a couple years ago talking about burnout. It's like, oh my gosh, this person had already like predicted everything that was going to happen to me. So, um, and she has this great talk that's like, how to prevent burnout? Maybe I should have listened to that part. And then also like, you know, how do you respond once you really are burnt out? So step back and identify the cause, which is that I was completely overwhelmed. Um, talk to people when you're ready, um, which I did. Um, I'm really grateful to Kate Chapman and Seth Fitzsimmons and actually the rest of the MapTime community who are here because I was holding on to this feeling just like it was like my dirty little secret. I was like, I don't want anyone to know that I'm dying inside. But, you know, it turns out that people can just like see that all over your face and I'm not very good at hiding things anyway. So, and the amazing thing that happened when I talked to all of these people, in addition to Seth being like, oh, you should just write, you know, you should submit a talk to State of the Map and the deadline's today, so here I am, um, uh, is that they said, you're not alone. Like, this is this thing that happens to a lot of people when they run open source communities. It's like, burnout is a thing. It's really hard to do this work on top of your full-time job. Um, again, which is why I realized that, you know, what Stamen had really given me, which was time to work on map time and Alan time to work on map time was really this, this wonderful, beautiful thing. So, um, you know, I refer to this Brene Brown video, which I hope everyone has seen, and she has this great quote, which is that if we stare, share a story with someone who responds with empathy and understanding, shame can't survive. And for me, that was really true. I found that just being really honest about what I was going through actually responded with, I was meted with, uh, like, I was greeted with, like, messages of, like, this is something that happens, and I hear you. And actually, you know, a lot of the other founders, my other co-founders were like, we feel better that you say that. I feel like a lightness is lifted. And so we've started to sort of make a plan for next steps. And since I can't do GIFs with a PDF, here's a little mini piece of the animation. Yay, hugs. Um, so, and that's great, because what that means is that maybe everything isn't hopeless bullshit, which is kind of what I thought about six months ago, when I was like, oh my god, my career is over, I have become a housewife and a slave to this gigantic house in the suburbs of Portland, what have I done? Um, and in addition, uh, I have, we have some really wonderful people who are stepping up to take over MapTime HQ, and actually Rachel Stevenson and Emily Ashley, I think, are here in the audience. Will you stand up? Will everyone give them a big round of applause? <laughs> for being like seriously map time heroes. I love them. And also they are looking for, um, we're gonna be looking for a few other volunteers to sort of help out with running map time. It's actually not too much work if you don't do it for too long. Um, 
which actually leads to some lessons that I have for map time as well, some unsolicited advice. Um, you know, put on your life vest before assisting others. This is just kind of basic. Um, and speak your truth. You'll be really amazed at what happens. Keeping um, these feelings a secret and like trying to like shame yourself into it is like not gonna help you out. Um, and if you need help, say so. People are there and really want to help. And I found this to be true in ways big and small with map time. You know, it went from like, oh, I need help with the website, and then Rafa was there. Oh, I need help with Twitter, and then like Alan and Lizzie were there. And if you give people tasks to do and say what you need help with, people will help. Um, it's also okay to move on. Like, nothing lasts forever. This is true with relationships, it's true with jobs, it's true with life, um, and it's true with organizations and your participation in that organization. Um, I had somebody who I will uh, remain unnamed uh, sent me an email and he was like, oh my gosh, I'm running a thing and I'm really just don't know what to do and I'm so burnt out. And he was like, what if I leave? And I was like, that's okay. And then I realized I should tell myself that. Like, that's actually really good advice. Um, and also, no one has to go alone. Like, that's what our community is for. That's why we have this wonderful support structure. Um, and then, of course, some, some unsolicited advice for my future leaders. Consider one-year-term uh, one term limits for leadership so that you don't, you know, by the time you feel like you're ready to pass it on, you can. Um, State of the map has sort of been like our little grounding place ever since day one. It's where map time started and I feel like where we come together every year. So it's a wonderful place to maybe have a, the map time summit and rites of passage for handoff. And also consider finding a fiscal sponsor since we don't really have that much money and that's kind of okay. Um, but actually these are kind of like, most of these are actually really lessons for everyone all the time, as well as the fact that like there's really no community like the geo community. Uh, I've spent the, the past year you know, forging new paths in, in Oregon, and I haven't spent as much time mapping as I would like, and I would love to come back to it. But I've said before, and I'll say again, that this community is one that seeks truth, and they seek beauty, and you seek to do good work in the world and to display it. And that is something that I think is in our work, and it's something that rings true for a lot of us as humans as well, so much love. Um, so what's next for me, um, in addition to uh, working a whole lot less, which is a good thing? Um, I've gotten involved with this wonderful thing in uh, Oregon called the Portland Underground Grad School. So rather than doing tutorials on maps, we do lessons and classes on all kinds of things like how to be an ally and white privilege and reading Ta-Nehisi Coates and tenants rights. So I'm using a lot of the things that I learned uh, through map time through helping this organization, which um, I will soon be doing a little bit more work with. Um, and then what other, whatever other adventures come my way, I spent the last week in the woods learning how to pitch a tent with a tarp and some sticks, and it was kind of the best, and I don't think I realized how much I needed that in my life. Um, so my major takeaways are for anybody everywhere, and for me, is to keep going and to never stop learning, and thank you. Yeah, and I'll take questions. I will still take all of your money if you have it. I have a bank account for myself. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you for all, all your hard work. Uh, it has been well appreciated in sure, places thanks. like Los Angeles, where we have a, a vibrant MapTime LA community. Um, what's, a, what's a good example of a fiscal partner, like a fiscal sponsor? Like, can you give some examples? Um, sure. I think that, you know, I, I wonder if like the, uh, the OpenStreetMap Foundation might be a good fiscal sponsor. We have written in our bylaws that, you know, any money, if map time were ever to shut down and we had money, the money that we had would go to the OpenStreetMap Foundation. So it seems like that might be good. Um, but any, anything, any organization that's involved in community education and has, and that sort of fits under that umbrella, I think would be um, a good fit. Um, part of the challenge that we, we've had um, is just, you know, all of these different companies have all of these different tools, and so it's important, it's always felt, it seemed important to the community and come out in discussions that having sort of no bias towards those things is important, so that would be the main thing that I would look for, is just like a lack of bias and a real focus on education. And maps, maybe. Other questions? <laughs> but that's not good for the recording. Um, hi. When it comes to um, map time and building community, um, you know, there are, it all kind of happens from the ground up. Can you talk about uh, some sort of 
more specific pitfalls of like being an organizer and how to avoid either avoiding burnout or just generally like putting good systems in place so that the community can continue even if you personally need to take a break? Yeah, sure. Um, that's a great question, Lizzie. Um, I think that some of the best things that you can do, and I've actually heard, well, what I was going to say is that I think one of the best things you can do is to have helpers in your uh, community with you. It's like, so don't be the only person who is running your map time. Have somebody else who, even if their main job is to show up and like set out chairs, can help you if you get sick or just can't make it one month. The other thing that I would recommend is if there's a way to sort of divide and conquer when it comes to organizing and teaching, that that's a really great idea because then you are not on the hook for both getting the space and getting snacks and getting any kind of like local sponsorship that you might want. Um, but you can also then sort of like give the teaching piece to somebody else. Um, another thing to mention, and I mentioned it at the last Map Time Summit, and I'll mention it again, there's nothing wrong with collecting money at your local meetup. Like, if you need to have money to cover space or food, um, then that is totally encouraged. And in some ways, it's more sustainable than having, like, one gigantic bank account that you have to feed everything into and then disperse out. Because um, I don't think that any of us, like, bring home enough money for the IRS to really care. Another question? And then please give Beth... Oh. So I raised my hand without having a question because I That's felt like great. I wanted to ask you something. Um, but then. But then I'm taking a moment. That's so okay. There are, I think, you know, what you've, what you're talking about is happens to a lot of people. Um, do you, what would you like to see as far as like mutual support among people trying to build community? Mm. Mm. Or maybe not mutual support, but what do you think could be helpful between communities for people who are, have this kind of vision, but also sometimes being a, a leader can be a bit lonely? That's a good question. Um, I think one, one thing that I think would be helpful just in general is, again, sort of setting time limits on your, you know, the time that you're spending volunteering, especially if it's a volunteer effort. But I think that you're, you're on to something that I don't know quite the answer to, which is that there's a lot of these organizations, you know, doing really similar work. Like, I love, um, I love what Andrew was just talking about, doing these, like, fun map walks in D.C. Like, that's great. And it's not exactly the same thing as map time, but there's certainly overlap. And, you know, we, if you spend enough time in this community, which a lot of you have, you'll start to see that, like, oh, the same people are, like, hanging out at all these different events. So... You know, that's a good question. I wonder if there, there is, I mean, one idea that comes to mind is like, I wonder if there was like, you know, like a, like a general set of guidelines that could be followed for all of these organizational members, or maybe there would be maybe a Slack channel where everyone could communicate and help each other out, because I mean, we're all learning a lot of the same lessons. Um, and, you know, sometimes, one of my big learnings was that I thought that I was like doing this in a silo and like totally being just a failure. And I came to learn that like, oh no, in fact, a lot of people go through this and have similar feelings. Um, but I think that a big part of it is also just being honest, just being honest about what you need and not being scared to ask for help. Like as a leader, there's sort of this, and I think especially in like our culture, there's like this thing where it's like, I can never show weakness to the world. You know, I can never show that I'm having a hard time, but I think that there's also a real strength in that. So just being real with people and figuring out mechanisms to support one another is, is great. And I wish I had a better answer because it's a really good question. Hey, thanks. Yeah, and that's another thing that's really great is um, the realization that like the child has grown up. Like it doesn't need it doesn't need to be at my teat all the time. You know, like there are other teats. You know, I don't even know if it needs one. You know, I think it can actually like walk and talk and do its own thing on its own. So that's pretty great. <laughs> Did you want to talk about maps at this talk? I'm sorry, we were going to talk about feelings. <laughs> A uh, question from another person who's involved in nonprofits and charity and all that good community organizing stuff. 
Uh, one of the things I struggle with myself, and I'd love to hear your perspective on this, is what to do when the need is infinite and your personal resources are finite. <laughs> I'd love to hear some thoughts about that. Uh, I think that what you have to do um, is something that actually I'm really, an, one of the greatest things I learned from Eric Rodenbeck was to, because there's always infinite things that need to be done, was to like take a Sharpie and cross off everything except for like the top three, or better yet, I guess a more efficient way to do it would just be like to highlight the top three and just leave the rest. Um, and really just focus on those three things. Um, one thing that we did as, uh, as HQ for part of this year, which I thought worked really well, was that each person decided just to do one thing a month. One thing a month as a volunteer. So it wasn't like, oh, I have to like make this video, which we never got to do, and like, and like, you know, run this meeting and write this talk and do this thing. It's like, okay, no, one person is gonna make this phone call, another person is going to like set up this thing, and another person's gonna do one other thing, and then we'll come together in a month. Um, we don't have to do all things all at once, even though it might feel that way. Any other questions, comments? Okay, please give Beth a warm thank you for. Thank you.